Good day and welcome to the Dark Heresy Framework tutorial. Um, well, it's been a long time since I promised to do one with voice, um, and I finally come round to, to doing it. Uh, this tutorial will only explain the Dark Heresy part. Um, there are actually, if you look in the settings of this framework, I just loaded the campaign. Um, you can see that uh, there are quite some system rules. I'm not going into d detail. Um, what is important is to know is that this framework supports Dark Heresy as well as Rogue Trader, Black Crusade, Only War, and uh, Death Watch. I think um, in the companion you can load all the equipment depending on which uh, game you want to play. As I said, for now I'm going to keep it to uh, the core of uh, Dark Heresy. Okay, first off, to um, create a new character you simply need a token, which is a picture. This one you load onto the map, and as soon as you do that you get a pop-up asking for a name. Um, in this case we'll make it a PC a character. Here you can see that you can make different types. If you want a vehicle, just select vehicle. If you want a rogue trader ship, select that one. Army I should ignore. Grenade, teleport, none. These are uh, different types of tokens. In this case we want a character. A type of favor. Um, this is mainly for NPCs. Uh, favor is fate, fate points. Um, you can also choose none for NPCs. Uh, size of token, um, well, for example, hulking for space marines, but you have other sizes as well. The site, we start with normal, but you can see you can add several site types. And the owner, in this case, is uh, well the only player that's connected, which is me. Okay, so now we have created a character. As you can see, if I hover over the character, then it already has some some basic uh, uh, stats. Now, to create a token completely from scratch, you can best go to the Maleus website, Maleus.dk. There you can create a oh, there you can create a character. In this case, I created uh, Ideas Ibda. Let's have a look at it. Let's make it a bit smaller so you can actually see it. Uh, here I added some skills, talents, traits, armor, weapons, etc. So that's already done. Um, and then you can simply export the text. Uh, you could also write this up in a, in a text editor. There are some rules when you uh, when you create this. So it's easier to see. Um, Profile stats, wounds, corruption points, sanity, etc. Uh, for the skills, uh, for example, common lore, and here you can see the class Yargi at zero, imperial creed plus ten, drive, acquire literacy, etc. etc. Okay, we're going to select this and copy it, then we move it away, then we select our token, and we go to the token props parser. If we open that one, Move that away. You have paste text block here. As you can see, you can also click on this link and it will open the Malayo site directly. And there you can enter your character. This you can um, ignore. Uh, the only thing you need to check is if uh, the first line, number one, is the name, which is correct, and the fourth line is the number of stats one, two, three, four. It's also correct, so now we can save. Now it starts parsing everything onto the token. If you make a, a typo, which can happen, um, well in this case everything is alright, but should I make a typo, for example, um, let's say uh, not a boarding armor, barding armor. Let's pick a new token for that one. So same thing. So now again save. 
then you will get a after a while a pop-up saying that boarding armor doesn't exist which should it be well boarding armor you can also say items in the selection please show the whole list which is pretty long uh, and if it's something uh, that usually is typed wrong then you can also say learn the substitution which means that the next time it encounters boarding armor it will automatically switch it for boarding armor uh, okay so now we continue and the rest will be the same so that's creating a character I'm going to delete this one and you can close this one and as you can see um, there are some things armors is updated and I notice a typo here which I need to correct weapons have to be updated etc etc so if we now look at the token we can open the go to the management tab we can open the full sheet takes a bit first time uh, if you it, the screens tend to uh, lock on the sides if you don't want that you can press the control key I don't know what's on a Mac um, and that way it uh, will not lock this shows the entire sheet uh, what's pretty fancy about this is that you can actually click for example on awareness oh. And you get a pop up. You say, Well, I only want to show to the GM and owner. Um, you can see it's at half skill, but I give it a modifier of 10. Okay, and then here you can see the result of this awareness skill. In this case, um, I need to do it a little bit higher. In this case, you can see the perception skill is 41, it's only half level, so 21 is deducted. deducted. Uh, additional modifier of 10, so a total of 30. Uh, you roll 72, so you failed. You roll with four degrees of failure. Um, okay, that's that. Well, same thing. You can do a weapon skill roll. You can do a. Uh, I can use advanced skills. You can do an unarmed attack this way. Attack, and you will see. Same thing again with uh, modifiers. Okay, so that's the full sheet. Now let's do some. Uh, let's first upgrade some particulars of this token. You can already see that it carries the cutlass, which was in the uh, in the character sheet. So where's that thing here? You can see here with armor, it already has a light flak co coat, weapons, a auto pistol, and a cutlass. Gear, chronometer, common clothing, adornment and a cast spray so um, if I select for example the auto pistol I get the ask to if it's primary hand or the secondary secondary means you get a minus 10 if I recall correctly uh, penalty so let's equip this in the primary hand and then you get the attack screen again for example we could do a full auto burst uh, we can't aim Standard attack. Um, usually, the, these are the most default, but you can also see that, for example, target can be prone, surprise, stunt melee. You just select them, and the modifiers are are applied. Let's say that the target is pr prone, so it's minus ten, um, and then we take a shot. See what happens. See ballistic skill is thirty nine. Full burst plus 20, targets prone minus 10. So it'll, everything goes automatically. Okay. Now, let's say we want to add some additional armor, add new armor. Um, for example, a Rosarius shield, deflector shield. Choose it. Okay. Then we also, I think it's not equipped. Oh, okay, it's already equipped. Um, then on your comet and action screen you can see that you can turn on the deflector sheet. So if I turn it on, then it pops up here in the chat. It's been turned on and you can see a small aura surrounding the character. So you see that it's an active shield. If I turn it off again, oh, if I turn it off again, then it will disappear. Let's also add some weapons. In this case, grenades, which is a thrown weapon. 
and let's go for the default frag grenades choose now uh, I also want some additional clips and additional grenades so I'm going for the ammo I say well auto pistol I would like to have five additional clips and if you look here you can see that it now has five additional clips same for the frag grenade if I go to ammo frag grenade okay I also want uh, four frag grenades I already have one because I equipped it um, similar for choose gear let's also upgrade the weapon let's say that the auto pistol is a best and let's also assume that we want two one for the right and one for the left hand what we do then is we upgrade it as well best auto pistol okay and we select second second means a second weapon because you cannot have two weapons with exactly the same name as the framework doesn't understand that so the second weapon needs to have a different name so you have a best auto pistol and your second best auto pistol um, so the best auto pistol we will put in our primary hand um, well, let's attack and the second best we do in our secondary hand let's uh, skip this one it should be equipped although it doesn't show here let's check yeah so it's a small mistake that doesn't update but here you can see green is your primary red is your secondary hand okay so we have our Rosario shields we have two shooting weapons let's go to the combat map well, I in the I've also added a lip on token move or better known as the bag of tricks in the bag of tricks you can uh, create all kinds of special pads in this case there is one I think it's on the object layer hidden now this one is called interpad 3 interpad simply means that it's connected to another interpad 3 on another map um, and when you have two of these tokens then they are and you initialize them which you need to check the um, tutorial for the back of tricks um, but if they are initialized then they will connect so if I move it over here hopefully um, well it appears that I actually forgot to initialize it so I'm going to do that now um, back of tricks initialize pads any pad with a special name like interpads will be found uh, ignore this one and it shows up all the special pads which uh, are on this map again I'll ignore this and now it should work et voila. let's clear this okay so now we're on the battle map uh, and I'll switch to player view And that's not very handy if I well okay well, play view is not working as I would expect it so we do an actual play view uh, and we move to a logged in player screen as you can see um, if a player does not own a token at the bottom you, view, you can see what he's wearing, what the character has in his hands, and what's the distance to itself. Well, in this case, to itself, obviously zero. Um, I cannot sel I can select it, but I cannot do anything with it because I need ownership. So the DM first needs to give ownership to ownership to the player. So we do that. Now the player owns the token. And as you can see, we can select it and we see the full stats. Okay. Let's make this a bit bigger. Move the chat here. Micros here. Let's dock this one. Okay. So, 
Right, so the player can now move around and gives a little beep every time it moves. Um, this you can turn off. Let's do that immediately. The sounds because it will be annoying. Well, you get a full view. Um, you see that the player has landed on a landing pad. There's an open door and um, I can look. So let's go in. Okay, so when we move in, then we see that the fog of war is uh, slowly revealed. So we can move on until we finally have some contact. And here we have an enemy. Bad guy number one. So let's initiate a battle. To do that, um, well in this case it's better done by the GM. So I switch back to the GM view. Mm. Let's put it, this one at the top, and we usually only during game you need the campaign panel, so we open that one. You can also move this one a little bit up, so it's not in the way. As you can see, way at the bottom, you have all the campaign buttons which the GM usually needs. In this case, it will need the raw initiative. Now, to roll initiative, you first select all the characters which are on the map. You can simply do it like this. Well, there are three characters. This is something the GM sees, not the player. And you can roll. Okay. In the chat now, you can see that bad guy numbers, number one um, rolls 8.35. Um, what this means is... You roll the 5 on a 1d10, his agility bonus modifier is a plus 3, and in case that someone has the same agility as another character, I also add the agility score, which is 35, as uh, 0.35. So everyone uh, will, well, in this case, they seem all to have, well, most of them seem to have a an agility of 35, but okay. Uh, it works well. Bad guy number one, receive initiative. If you want to track initiative as well, you can open the initiative panel. Get a bit cloudy in here, so we can make this a bit smaller. And here you can see the, the bigger, the order of initiative. Well, in this case, Ideas, our player character, is last. Not very good. But that's the way it is. Okay. This one we need don't need as well. So as the bad guys first, you can also see that the one who has initiative is surrounded by these uh, green triangles. If you can't find a character, simply double click on the character in the initiative panel and it will automatically center on it. Okay, so this one has as you can see has a clear view of ideas. And what will he do? He will pick his last gun, which is already equipped, and it will shoot it. Well, let's go for a semi auto burst. Um, oh, we need to know the range. So let's go. Uh, can't see it. Put that one over there. Put that one away. Bit small screen. As you can see, the distance is. Oh, the distance is 10, and that's short range for last gun. Way at the bottom, you see it. So, short range attack. Okay, semi auto burst, short range, normal visibility. Um, target isn't doing anything, so it's a simple attack. Now, to automate everything completely, we can also select the target. And you can see at the bottom the targets you have selected. You can select multiple targets if you like. Uh, in case here you go. In case you, oh, you can't see that. So in case uh, they're standing close to each other and you want to do a spread with your semi auto burst. What you also should know is that um, if you change your selection, this screen is rebuilt, so all your settings will be uh, reset. So the first thing you do. Is when you're when it's your turn, first select the targets, then it resets, then you set the action and short short range, and then you press the attack button. 
Okay, let's see what happens. Okay, now, um, since we are doing an online game, um, everyone gets the chance to respond. So we go back to the GM screen, this of the player screen. The player gets a pop up and saying that bad guy number one fires a semi auto burst with a less gun and he has two hits. So, will you going to try to dodge? Yes. Uh, do you have any modifier? Well, no. Usually you don't. Okay. So, we are now have evaded, so we go back to the GM screen. Um, and since everybody has responded, you now can click OK. And the rest of the attack is calculated. This will take a little bit of time. Here we go. Ah, it's a bad one. So, what did he do? Um, ballistic skill 35, plus 10 for a semi burst, plus 10 for the range, plus 10 for a less weapon. That's a house rule I applied. You can turn it off if you like in the settings house rule. Um, it rolls 41. Targets hit in the arms, takes 13 dam energy damage. Well, also rolls a righteous fury, which is apparently not confirmed. Um, and a weapon damage modifier of 3 of the last gun. An additional hit of 9. So, Ideas fails the dodge test with 2 degrees of failure. He rolls 36 on 12 when he apparently doesn't have the skill. Bad thing. So he takes quite a bit of damage. Damage type. The first one makes him heavily wounded at 1. The second um, he's at minus 3. Critical energy hit on arm. Um, this is basically the result of the critical attack, critical hit. And as you can see, uh, one is uh, one slash means wounded, two slashes means heavily wounded, three slashes means critically wounded. This one, this um, state, you can also see it again at the bottom, just above distance. I, I can't show it with my mouse because it will disappear. Uh, you see the condition, he's stunned. That's the meaning of this uh, one. He's critically wounded, he's fatigued, uh, because he took a level of fatigue, and he already dodged, which is his big D, which means that he cannot dodge again, unless, of course, he has the, the skills to, or talents to do so. Uh, this drop of sweat uh, means that it's fatigued. So you can see the states uh, critical, the state dodged, the state stunned, and the state uh, fatigued. Again, this is all done automatically. Also, he's stunned for one round, which means that the next round he can't do anything. Okay, so that was the first attack. I don't think he's going to survive this. Uh. So, when that's done, um, the bad guy, in this case, the DM, clicks and turn. GM can also do next. It's the same thing, but the players can, when they've done, they can click and turn. Okay, so the next one is, uh, you can see here, I can double click again, and it sends it. This one does not have a clear view, so what he can do, he can, for example, say, well, I'm going to uh, delay my initiative, which apparently is broken, so I'll need to fix that. Um, I'll do that for the next release. Um, the other way is simply to toggle hold, which also is the same thing as delay. Okay. Next, and turn. The third one is. Let's say that this one's going to make a move mm, to here. So we can see. Oh, first we can see what the movement is. Um, in the middle you see M charge run. A Half move, half action move is 3, which is the agility bonus. The charge is 9, and running is 18. So you can take a half action to move 3 squares. 1, 3, you can also see the counter at the bottom. Mm, let's say, well, you can't move on a crate. It's a bit difficult movement here. This is a small crate, so you can probably jump over it. So that's a move of 3. Mm, that's half action. And let's say he does another half. So one, 
two, uh, let's go stand here, three. And that means that his turn is over. So again, and turn. Now, Ideasis, but he's stunned, so he can't do anything. Um, so we end this turn immediately. And that means that the bad guy is again. Well, let's say the bad guy this time wants to throw a frag grenade. Right my hand. So he needs to he first needs to equip it. And then a big frag grenade pops up. Now here you can see place a grenade marker, which is on the token, currently on the token, on the spot you're aiming at before you click attack. This is where you are wanting to throw grenade. Should you miss, then the grenade is automatically moved to the spot um, depending on the degrees of failure. So let's put it on on the token. Um, you don't select target this time. This is a standard attack. Uh, you already took a half action so you can't do much more. Target is stunned which gives a plus 20. And let's attack. Now as you can see even with the plus 20 he rolls a 94 um, which means that he missed with uh, two degrees of failure and that means that he has to place it three squares in a random direction in this case southwest. As you can see the system automatically places the, the uh, grenade over there. Plus radius is four Everyone is within the radius is hit. So if you want to see the radius, you select the frag grenade and you get a small pop-up here where you can see the several buttons. Well, the I might be okay in this case. Well, he nearly ruled, uh, he nearly fumbled, which means that uh, this one would be turned on. In this case, we just want to see the blast radius. So voila! Now, as you can see, the blast radius um, the target is well within and there are two types with this blast radius you see which parts are not hit because due to cover but for these types of squares it's a bit unclear whether you're in range or you're not so I also created the grid blast radius which exactly shows where the grenade can hit so this one shows that, for example, would you be standing over here, that you're completely in cover, so it doesn't hit. This one shows the range, and it shows, for example, that this square here, which is barely touched, uh, is out of range. Um, and this one here, which is less than half touched, but it is within range. Another way to check this is simply by moving the grenade. You can see it's 4, which is within the blast radius. Okay, Ideas is well within the blast radius, which means he takes, let's see, 15 explosive damage on the body. Now this we need to do manually, so we're going to select Ideas. As you can see, the macros change depending on the token you select. Ideas takes damage over here. 15, it's already uh, set. Uh, I usually rule that grenade explosions always on body. It's non primitive, it's explosive, uh, blast not central on the target in case of flak armor. So we do OK. And that's the end of Ideas. Critical explosive hit on body, boom. Okay, well, that's basically is everything. Now if I continue a bit we can do a little bit extra. First we need to heal our token to uh, a normal state. Um, that's combat action, healing. Let's say that we completely restore this token. Okay, so now I'm going to show you a couple of things. Um, the frag grenades. Let's remove this one. Right. A couple of things you haven't I haven't explained yet. Here, these blue bars, if I zoom in a bit, uh, shows the ammunition you still have left. 
you can see it here as well you, um, you usually load the 16 which means that uh, both pistols are at uh, three quarters full and as you can see they're at three quarters full this one is a little bit less because of the way it is set up but here you can see how full the ammo or how full the uh, the clip is let's first turn on the rosaria shield this time that will help immensely let's also say that um, this character is actually skilled in dodging that's also helping so we give him a plus 10 dodge bonus choose and let's give him a little bit better stats so then we need to keep in management we can edit the characteristics and here we can say wow well, weapon skill is advanced to uh, I don't know 40 ballistic skill also 40 strength well, toughness uh, 40 high agility of 50 so we can dodge a bit um, let's also make him a sanctioned psyker which means to add a psy rating let's just say 5 um, he's not a navigator not an apotheker and apply sudden death you usually do for uh, NPCs okay so we now made it a psyker which means I don't need to add psy powers add new power Let's uh, take Agony. Mm, what's another nice one? Um, let's see. Well, there are a lot. Um, the one I'm looking for, I can't find it. But okay, let's, one is enough. Agony. So at the bottom, you will find a choose psychic powers. And now, in the combat actions, you will notice that there is an extra button here. Use Psy Power. Let's say he wants to use his Psy Power, well there's only one, Agony. Um, it's a full action, threshold 13, range is 10, which is just in range for the other uh, one, as you remember from the last time. Uh, sustained Power, well, etc. How many dice you want to roll? Uh, Psyonic Grade uh, is 5. If you want to do it feathered, it's the Ascension rules. You do it at 3, so no uh, Psychic Phenomenon is rolled. Extraordinary uh, modifiers you can add. Well, let's say he will go for a full blast. Bit overkill, but okay. Um, is it a secret roll? No, I'm just going to send it to everyone. Okay. And here we go 5d10, 34. Here you can see the, the rolls adding up to 30. Willpower bonus is added, total 34. Threshold 13, difference 21, which means that he has four times overbleed. Target makes a toughness test each round. On failure, it may take only half action. It fails larger than three degrees. Target takes no action. Takes level of fatigue. Comes plus ten plus an interrogation test. These things are not automated, so you need to do that manually. And I'll show you how. Uh, for every five points, you affect an extra target. Now let's assume that all three targets are within ten uh, range ten. Well, this one is. This one is as well. And this one is even closer. So all are affected. Okay, that means that this one needs to roll a toughness. Well, there are two ways to do this. You can use the full character sheet, which I showed you earlier. Um, you can also say, okay, I want to do a test versus characteristic. I want to do a toughness test. And that's it. And he fails, which means he may only take a half action. There's not really a state for that, so we'll need to remember that one. This one, test versus characteristic, toughness test, okay, also fails. And the third one, well, let's do the third one the other way. Let's take a quick sheet this time. Quick sheet. It's called quick sheet because it's, it's loading faster and it should be a little bit smaller than the full sheet um, as everything is divided. Now, here I can also do a toughness test. Can add a modifier? Nope. And he fails as well. Okay, so all three fail. All three can only take a half action. Let's take this one here. 
and let him also use his last gun. Okay. Now to show you what happens if you take multiple targets, let's select two targets. Let's again do a semi-auto burst. Um, short range. Let's give him a big modifier this time, so we're pretty sure that he's going to hit. Um, oh, by the way, every setting has a tooltip. Most, well, if necessary, um, most things within uh, the framework have tooltips. For example, the settings uh, which I showed you earlier all have tooltips explaining what it does. So in this case, um, we want to give a additional attack bonus granted by special abilities not covered by the framework. Well, in this case, I want to make sure he hits, so I give him an attack bonus of 100. I have my target selected, so now I go boom. Okay, so I have amazingly only scored one hit, uh, which I can divide over these two, well it's not very... Uh, so let's say that I'm going to give Ideas hit by one hit. Okay, now we get this view again, so we switch to player view. And in player view, yes I would like to dodge. My dodge skill is a lot better this time. Okay, so the GM asks if everybody has uh, reacted. Everybody says yes, so okay. Okay. And unfortunately, he fails. But this time, his Rosarius field is active. He gets 8. But due to the Rosarius field, you can see. Um, 10 points are soaked, 5 additionally due to the armor, 4 toughness bonus, so nothing comes through. Okay. Um, well let me try to give an example of a full auto burst, the best weapon. So again, we select targets, full auto burst. Let's again give this one a hefty bonus Let's see if I can show it this time correctly okay now we can have three hits and we can divide them so we give one to him one to him and one to him okay uh, I see I do this from the DM panel instead of the um, players panel but okay DM gets the pop-up fires yada 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 do you want to dodge yes for the second bad guy as well, yes. And for the third one as well, yes. And it takes a bit to calculate this, and here it is. So what do we have? First of all, the hits. The first one in the legs for 10 impact, and two additional hits, one on the legs, one on the body. Again, everything is automated. Uh, bad guy uses dodge kill. Uh, fails, fails, fails. So they all can hit. Mm, and then yeah, they all hit, get hit. They all, and the damage is at the bottom. So they all are damaged now. And as you can see, because they dodged, they have the big D. And because uh, they are all wounded, they have one slash. Now, if we advance initiative, let's use this button, and continue here, then next, every time you uh, it's your turn, the dodge disappears because uh, it resets as soon as it's your turn. Uh, you can also see that uh, Ideas is no longer an initiative panel, and that was because he was dead. If you want to add him again, I roll, I can also do a manual if I like, play his initiative, well, 5. Uh, voilà. uh, manual means that you have full control, so no bonuses are added. You add what you add is what you you see here. Okay, well, so it was a bit little. Uh, so, okay, what else do we have? Um, other functions which are of interest. For example, he Ideas could also choose to do a Suppressing fire. Mm, 
no, it's not select targets this time to show you the other way. No, this press a fire. Reroll 72 targets is hit in the arm. Um, he gets a minus 20 uh, due to suppressing fire. And apparently, I had targets prone additional modifiers which I added. So, everything I, I uh, put in there is put in here, which means that two targets are hit. Now, this time, because I didn't choose any targets, I have to do it manual. No, DM usually with a suppressing fire chooses randomly. So let's say that he takes the one who's heavily wounded, which takes 10 impact damage. Okay. Uh, come. 10 in the secondary arm should be correct. Yeah. Mm. This is primary arm actually. Primary arm 10. Uh, the additional hits are also here. Um, but since we divide, want to divide them, I'm going to put this one at zero. So 10 primary arm, non primitive. Okay. And the second target that is hit is this one. Again, damage. Now we have to do it manually because he remembers uh, the last attack roll, which is 12 in the secondary arm. Okay. Now, in my game, with pinning, I asked, um, actually this one, had initiative, okay, um, with pinning, I always rule that the one who is in the pinning field, by the way, if you want to know what the pinning field is, suppressing uh, field, you can show suppress field, in this case of the best auto pistol which I used, and if I... Uh, this, if I use my uh, mouse wheel, it zooms. If I hit the control key, sorry, the shift key, I can uh, uh, rotate the view. And if I also hit the control key, so control and shift, I can do it gradually. So I can lay my suppressing field like this, so the roll three in. Okay, I can leave it on, so players can uh, see it. Um, you see, you can show other ranges as well okay now this guy here is his turn he's in the pinning field so now he has to make a pinning check select hit the button uh, there's three types pin check immediately after suppressing fire minus 20 normal pin check any other turn and pin check when not shot at all but still pinned um, this is the first round so it's a minus 20 pin check Let's see. Bad guy makes a pin check and he rolls 52 versus 5. That's a low. Ah, his low power is very low. So he fails, which means you only have half action. And you can see a big pin here, which means he is pinned. Okay. Uh, and since he failed, his only action can be moving out of uh, the pinning zone or taking cover. Oh. This one provides cover, as you can see. This one as well. Um, he can only move three. Yes. So let's say that the easiest way out here. The next one, same thing. Pinning check. Come on. First one. Also pinned. Also moves out of the pinning range and I apparently skipped uh, this guy but let's say that he zoom as well pin check well very small chance that he actually succeeds so he will move preferably somewhere in cover well at least out of the pin range okay that's that um other interesting things for example using fate point it's usually something between a DM and a player so you just hit it and your fate point total is lowered by one not your pool or your pool not your uh, your starting amount as you can see here fate points are just below the middle 
bit difficult to see. Just a little middle, and you can see that um, D has uh, IP is insanity points, CP is corruption points, fate pool, and fate points. So he has one point left in his fate pool, but he still has two fate points. Should I also burn one? Then you will see that he now has only one fate point left. Other buttons, um, well there are several ways uh, to use a skill check as I just show you. You can also use the menu the, the menu, and uh, pick a skill, let's say an inquiry check to the GM only. And let's do this from the player view, because I'm DM look, this is what the player sees. So the player uses a skill, likes to do a, you know, let's say that the player is going to do a search check. And uh, the GM doesn't want him to know what the result is. So he says, I want to, you made the roll, I only want to see it. So you do GM only. Okay. Now what the GM will see, if it works correctly. Oh. Let's do it like this. Here. Uh, the GM sees that he uses a search skill. Fills for the 53 buff. So the GM will say, well, you don't find anything. The players and the player in this uh, matter doesn't see anything. Mm. Other things are uh, opposed tests. In this case, uh, Ideas wants to do a, an opposed test versus a bad guy. Show to all. Okay. Well, what kind of an opposed test would you like to do? Can be skill. Can be characteristic. So let's say a uh, concealment test versus a awareness test. Bad guy tries to find Ideas. Um, both don't have any modifiers. Okay. So what do we see? Ideas makes an opposed test. Uses a skill check. He rolls 60 above. The bad guy succeeds, which means that the bad guy wins the post test due to the most successes. Six degrees of fail by Ideas, one degree of success by the bad guy. So that means that the bad guy will find Ideas if he's hidden. Other interesting things to know. Mm. Summon. Let's just pick one randomly. So we still have some time. Uh, summon uh, everything which is on the base map. Let's show that first. Base map. That's what you usually see when I load the map. Everything which is on here, uh, like NPCs, uh, ships, vehicles, and the huge amount of grenades, uh, will show up in the summon panel. But only what is placed on the base map. So, go back here. Mm. Let's do a summon again. Oh. Okay. I didn't select a token, so I'll do that first. Else it will show up at uh, the zero zero coordinate. Um, special thing. Well, let's grab an NPC crew, for example. Uh, I like to have uh, three. Um, all three will drop on top of this token. So let's say I want them uh, spread. Then they will, uh, they will be spread as you will see uh, in a moment. The coordinates, uh, in this case, because you selected a token, it will drop on the coordinates of the token. Location is 5410, so it drops on 5410. Let's say that I want to next to him, so we do it on 55. Okay. Um, well, self explanatory message, message. Et voila. And here are the three crew members spread it exactly as I said. Um, other things of use dice box, just simply select the D100 roll if you want to do that. Um, seek token is very useful in map tools because you can search through all the maps for a specific type of token and you can it, it uh, works on partials so for example I know that Nihilus Fane is on the base map 
let's say I me I want to in the search results I want to see everything I only want normal tokens I want to look on every layer and um, if you find something then I would like to copy the token to the current location okay so now it does the search it should result in one token exactly now this is my current location if I now select Nihilus Fane now I didn't put it on coordinate zero zero because I didn't select the token when I ran it but okay let's do it Voila. Now in zero zero, which is um, somewhere, somewhere here, the token is dropped. If I first select the token, then do the summons, and as you will see, oh, sorry. Then I'll do the seek. So you will see it remembers the last settings. Okay. Uh, now he finds two because he did a copy. Um, pick one. And then when I click on it, it oh, it should no. Oh. For some reason, it still puts it in zero zero. But okay. So now that should be. Or three. I clicked it a couple of times. Um, switch map. Switch map is useful because usually when you want to switch map, you can pick one of these, and as you can see, all the maps are visible to the players. But let's say I want this map to be hidden. Uh, this. Uh, no, let's make this map. On this map to be hidden and I can hit Control H now it's hidden you can see it's hidden go back to the battle map if I switch to player view then from select map it doesn't show okay now if I still wants to force um, oh that's the thing um, if I select a map and I go to here then SGM I'm here and the oh oh come on and the player is still here if I want to force all the players to the, to this map I can use switch map I can say I can even push them to hidden maps I can say I want these players uh, pushed to this map okay now if I switch to the player again then the player is on the hidden map even though it's not visible to them okay uh, handouts. Um, I don't know. I have uh, something for handouts. Well, let's take this card here. Handout can push a screen to players. So let's say uh, this picture with a size 500. I can also enter text. Hello. And I want to push it to everyone. And here you see everyone gets this picture on screen. So if I swap to the player, he will have this as well. That's the handout function. Mm. Psychic phenomenon, fear check. It's pretty self explanatory. Blast radius, and it might be okay, which is usually on the grenades, but they're also here. Um, other things of interest. Let's well. Let's first switch back to the battle map. Okay. Other things of interest. Mm. Faith powers of priests. Upgrade weapon. I've shown equip weapon. So I have shown ammo. Choose gear. Well, it's basically the same as with um, armor and weapons. Armor, same thing. By the way, you can update wearing armor. In this case, Rosarius. Um, well, or light. Let's take off the light flag cloak. If I do 
update wearing armor, then the light flak coat should not be worn anymore. If I see at the bottom wearing boarding armor and no longer the light flak cloak. I think these are the main things of the framework to uh, get you started. Um, you can find me on the um, RP Tools forum, which is uh, over here. Let's see, RP Tools. Oh, takes a bit long. Anyway, forums rptools.net, um, where you can download the framework. If you have any questions, just uh, post there. And uh, I usually are several times a week around to answer your questions. Thank you for bearing with me uh, for uh, nearly 56 minutes. And uh, until next time, bye.